Hey folks, so this is an RX 560 4GB and this is also an RX 564GB and I kinda ended up winning both of these on eBay after a bit of late night bidding. Accidentally. Surely a good example of why you'd really need to refrain from getting yourself into a late night bidding war. But enough reminiscing, what we've got here are two identical Sapphire Pulse RX 564 gigs, which the seller was brutally honest about in the fact that they'd been used for mining for around 6-7 to seven months, and come with a mining focused BIOS. So I figured this has got to be a good time to revisit the topic of flashing your GPU BIOS, but this time focusing on newer Polaris based cards. Now a couple of years back I made a video about reviving an old HD 6950 a card which had a misflashed BIOS and didn't boot, and then I went further to flashing that card and unlocking its cores to turn it into an HD 6970. So we're kinda in a similar situation here with these mining focused cards. The BIOS and settings have been tweaked for mining, so if we were to use it in gaming, then at the best case we would not be getting optimal performance, and at worst and most likely case, it would just simply crash out. But the good news is that both these cards boot into Windows and can use the Windows basic display driver, so we're already going to have a bit of an easier time than I had when I tried to revive that 6950. The thing is though, these newer cards won't really work well with older versions of ATI Flash and a bootable USB DOS drive, which I used in that previous video, so today we're going to be using the latest release of AMD ATI Flash, which at the time of writing is 2.87, and this is a Windows based application. Now functionally this is going to do exactly the same job as that bootable DOS drive with ATI Flash, but it comes with a nice graphical user interface for ease of use, and it's got great compatibility with newer cards. But before we do that, we need to touch on the topic of housekeeping. If you're going to flash a card in Windows, you want to make sure everything is up to date. You don't want Windows surprising you with a sneaky restart and update mid-flash. So when you're happy that your system is not going to suddenly restart, you're going to want to head into your UEFI and put everything back to stock if you've got any overclocking tweaks. On this Athlon 240GE system, that means removing the 4.1GHz overclock and also returning the DDR4 back to stock speeds from the maximum overclock that we can get on the Athlon. Now although this system is absolutely rock solid at these settings, I mean the CPU can clock higher than 4.1 and the RAM I'm using is rated to 3200MHz, it's always better to take a couple of minutes and change it back to stock rather than regret it later in the rare occurrence that something untoward happens. Besides, with most new motherboards, you can still save your OC profile, meaning once your flash is completed, it's got to be a couple of clicks and you're back to where you were. Ok, so back into Windows now, and we've downloaded and installed the latest version of AMD ATI WinFlash version 2.87 from Tech Power Up. And the next stage, once that's installed, is to find a suitable BIOS for the card. Tech Power Up does a great job again here and has a vast array of BIOSes to choose from in its VGA BIOS collection. Filtering through the options, we can easily drive down and find the correct BIOS for our Sapphire RX 560 OC 4GB. With that BIOS downloaded and in an easily accessible location, let's boot up WinFlash and see if we can get these cards back to normal. First things first, we've got a BIOS on the card already, and while it is tailored for mining, it still lets us use the card, so it's got some value, in case something goes horribly wrong. WinFlash allows you to copy the existing BIOS on a card and save it, and that should really be your first port of call for peace of mind if nothing else, as if the stock flash goes awry, you know that you're going to have a working BIOS saved. With that done, flashing using WinFlash is as simple as loading the new BIOS image, the one that we just downloaded from Tech Power Up, and then hitting program. Now this usually takes less than a minute, but it is really important that when you hit program, you simply leave the PC alone while it does its thing. And if it's successful, you're going to receive a message prompting a restart to complete it, or if it fails, it's simply going to tell you that it's failed. But we've seen the message for a successful reflash, so we're going to restart the machine, and once we land back on the desktop, we're going to install the Radeon Adrenaline drivers. With those installed, a quick check through GPU-Z and all looks good. The card is now reporting as it should, and using AMD Wattman we can do a few little tweaks here and there, turning off 0 RPM mode being the first thing that I usually do, and just like any other used purchase, you're going to want to make sure that everything is actually working, and that means jumping into 3 d Mark and putting it through its paces with a 3 d Mark stress test. 
both these cards pass with over 99% pass rate, 97% is the threshold here, temps look ok, there's no artefacting and even the fan is pretty quiet which can sometimes be an issue with single fan cards that have been used for mining. So that's it, AMD ATI Win Flash. Using the graphical user interface, it seems to work fine, certainly much better than it used to when flashing older Radeon cards. There's also a command line version which offers a bit more functionality like blind force flashing, and if you're familiar with using an old bootable DOS drive, the command line version which is in the same folder as the executable for the GUI version is probably the one you want to go to. But for simply flashing a BIOS on an X mining card, the standard GUI version works well for me. But hey, tell me how you would go about sorting out a mining card if you're a die hard command line flasher? Or if you've tried out some of the various Windows based flashing utilities that are out there, I'd love to know. And remember, if you do want to try out the command line method, check out the old how to fix your dead GPU BIOS video, as even though it's now done through command prompt, the commands will be similar. For now though, I'm going to get stuck into these RX 560s and get them all cleaned up. So take care, and I'll see you in the comment section down below, and in the next video.